I'm Joshua Potts, Mr. Potts, but always with the brother with the same mother, Aaron Potts, Super Hot Potts, and you're watching and listening to your favorite two black runners every single day. Two black, two What's good, everybody? Man, track is back, baby. It's been popping in these streets. It's been oh, it really has. It really has, and we really hyped for track going down, but the roads as well. As we got a good episode coming up with a dude that just broke a record on the roads, a national record, Rory Linkletter. We really got a star studded. Just a great episode coming up for you on the Two Black Runners podcast. But before we get to that, Aaron, bro, we busy. We got a lot going on. We got to let the people know what we got going on. So we got a little bit for the real ones on here, a little bit around the track and an interview with Rory Linkletter coming up in a second. But first, in the month of February, we want to let you guys know we have a great list, a lineup of episodes coming out for Black History Month. We are two black runners, so we know we got to do it for the culture. You know, yes, we know what I mean. We have a list of episodes for black tastemakers in the running industry coming out in the month of February. Aaron, why do we want to do this so bad? So always for sure, we want people to be able to see themselves within the, within the sport, within the running industry, because there's so many, there's so many opportunities. There's so many opportunities. I know from my experience and, you know, doing this podcast to working at Hoka to running semi-professional, a lot of times um, athletes, you know, we get caught up in just that running part and we forget about all the amazing opportunities that there are with running and a lot of the time in the in the black community in particular in the industry you don't see a lot of us and you know that's why we kind of started this two black runners podcast yeah. that was one of our big things so to be able to bring on some people that aren't just athletes you know people that just do all these amazing things behind the scenes and it's like like we talk about you'll see in february once we really got into this media space, this running industry space, we started seeing like, wow, there really is like all these amazing, uh, beautiful black people doing all these amazing things behind the scenes and at the forefront that just don't always get this notice. So I'm, I really believe that this is going to inspire some more people and show them that they can, they can do it too. They can be a part of running and make their passion whether that's track and field or that's roads or just running to your friends you can make that into something impactful and into a career so that's really why you know what was put on my heart to really like highlight that this year oh shoot man y'all need to come out for these list of episodes in february yes, sir, and breaking it down for y'all and like like we two black runners we for the culture by the culture runner report produce podcast you feel me and like man we trying to keep the conversation going we talked about all the way back in 2020 when we were all like keep the conversation going with the mall arbor and everything that came out for that we keeping the conversation going no matter what and that ain't, that ain't never going to stop and the conversation continues in february as well the weekend of the 20th and throughout that other week too at the run usa running industry conference two black runners gonna be there can you believe that can you believe that we're gonna be at the run usa running industry conference on the main stage in front of a whole bunch of people interviewing marco chisetto we already had a great interview with marco one of our best bro this dude just speaks facts all the time but i've interview with him there this WMPT marathon world record hunter record holder runs about like a 233 is crazy has an insane story going to talk to them me and Aaron we're both psyched, psyched for that bro we going to Disney World Aaron it's about right. to be tight yeah it's crazy to think we're about to be in front of an audience of over a hundred people um with a with a world record holder uh with that too and he has such an inspirational message that it's gonna make change in the sport so like just super super feel super grateful and blessed to just have that opportunity most definitely bro and if you guys are liking everything that we're putting out bro 
please rate the podcast, review the podcast, share it with somebody, but especially rating and reviewing. It helps so much. It goes a long way. It boosts our podcast up into the categories and everything and people just going out like share it on your story. Something, something really small can do a long way for the podcast and we want to bring this to the next level. And we got bigger things even coming. Yeah. We just let you know, we, we, we withhold this stuff, stuff. We got more stuff coming on the way and we excited. So rate, review the podcast. Let's take this to the next level. But before we get to this Rory Link letter interview coming up, which is going to be fire, I and mean, we've had some heated discussion in that. We got to go around the track, Aaron. We got to go around the track because it's been wild. It's been yeah. wild, bro. First wild news that came out this past week really was Sha'Carri Richardson. There was two wild news stories about Sha'Carri Richardson, but let's start here. Her sub 11 seconds produced by Virgil Abadeau just came out on Sundance. It's available now. The Sundance, they didn't have their festival like they usually do, but you can purchase the movie. It's $50 and you get like 50 or like 100 other short films with it. But I would recommend uh, read Matt Windsor's article on women's running. He does a great job describing the movie, I would say. But Sha'Carri Richardson, her documentary comes out with sub 11 seconds produced by virgil abado out now with sundance aaron we saw the trailer what did you think about it this is a crazy thing that just happened bro yeah to me the first thing that stood out was that it was produced by virgil abado like virgil abado is culture like that guy pushes the needle moves it forward rest in peace to to virgil abado and the fact that, you know, she was in the Kanye West commercial, we thought that was huge. This is even bigger. Something produced art. Like Virgil Abloh was a was an artistic genius and he left his imprint, you know, on on the world. We all know how impactful he he was. Off white, y'all know what that is. Louis Vuitt Louis Vuitton, he was the head designer there. So many, so many things. Dark Twist the Fan, he design, designed that cover art. Yeah. But you know what also he did? He did a one hour film with Sha'Carri Richardson. That's what you're going to remember. That's a part of his legacy. So the fact that she's associated with that could tell you, you know, we're, we're not going to forget. The hype ain't dying on, on Sha'Carri Richardson. Remember we were just I talking know, about that? The hype is <laughs> yeah, not my going. Take is, the hype is not going over. anywhere, bro. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. So I'm super excited for her and just like, you know, other news that came out about her is just like, bro, it's unpredictable. I can't predict what she's going to do. No one can. No one can control her. But I think we're seeing like a different type of athlete that we've never seen before. There, she's She is definitely one of one. There's no other one like, like Sha'Carri. And most definitely, like how you said with this uh, new documentary or short film, wherever you want to call it, sub 11 seconds, like it's a it's an art. It, that's how it basically describes it. And that's what Matt Wisner described in his arc article when he describes like we wanted the director went on to say in like a discussion after the film saying that he we wanted to make something that is a time capsule and is a portrait of her at the spe specific moment. So it really co concentrates on her time at the Olympic trials and her running that running that great time and everything thing and just really not not focusing on like getting suspended from the olympics not being able to go and all that that band and stuff is really just focusing on that moment being there and hearing more of her story and it's crazy it's crazy i can't wait to watch it i don't know if i'm gonna buy it or i'm, I'm gonna watch it some way i'm gonna get my hands on that because you guys support your care you guys support what she's doing because she's changing the landscape of track and field and be able to be associated with Virgil, Kanye. She's doing something right Crazy. that people want to get talked about. But then also, Sha'Carri Richardson was rumored to be on Big Brother. That was the other crazy news that came out. TMZ came out and reported that this is actually not the case. Sha'Carri's rep came out and said that they they was contacted they were contacted months ago about being on Big Brother big brother and they declined all coverage on her participating in big brother is false and simply just rumors so she ain't gonna be a big brother low-key unfortunate once i heard that news i was like dang she really gonna do this and gonna try and make the world championships that would have been kind of beast you gotta admit that would have been kind of beast if she would have done it but like yeah she ain't gonna be, be on big brother I'm, which i think is for the best yeah i'm happy she's not gonna be on it but i would have watched if she was on it like she was about to be on there with tiffany pollard and like for the the older people watch Tiffany Pollard. Y'all don't know. I love New York. Flavor of love. Y'all know. Y'all seen clips of her spitting on that girl. She's a legend. Go look her up. She's a reality star legend. If Carrie Richardson and Tiffany Pollard want Big Brother together, that would have been hilarious. They definitely would have teamed up. So, like, 
Hey, we need to talk to Matt Wisner about that. Big Brother fans, shout out to him too. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that she's not doing it. I'm happy that she's just focusing on focusing on running because I, I I really just want to see her prove everyone wrong. And like Neo was gonna be on that. I was like Lamar Odom. I'm like, dang, Rosha <laughs> Carey really? She in that field now? That's yeah. isn't that wild? She she's in that field with Neo and Lamar Odom. Like, that's pretty wild. That's pretty wild, man. And track has been definitely crazy. But leading up to the end of January, I feel like this whole entire month, Aaron, every single week, just about sometimes every single day, the Milrose games, the Milrose fields are getting more and more stacked, bro. And finally, this weekend, January 29th Let's in go. the Armory, the Milrose games is going down. I'm excited. The first primetime track and field event of the year of 2022. Two is going to happen and we have a lot of big pro debuts we have the debut of cole hawker in his professional career cooper tier tara davis isaiah jewett and camp bennett and i'm pretty sure there's more on the list but those are the highlighted people that we have right here who are you most excited about what is the most anticipated primetime professional debut in track and field at the milrose games Aaron? bro it's none other than the guy that had you know the best the best uh brand announcement isaiah jewett the one and only 800 guy you know what i'm saying and yeah the 800 is an event right now that's kind of like is it up in the air is donovan is donovan the best you know the world champ didn't even make it to the olympics you know what i mean it's kind of it, it, it's in question like who is gonna take reins I, I i feel like that to be honest no 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 offense you know and i feel like Someone like Isaiah Jewett, you know, ran 143.8 last year after winning NCAAs, getting faster every single round after such a long season. And we didn't get to see him do his thing in the final because of that trip and disqualification. You know what I'm saying? So I want to see, you know, is he going to take it from the gun? Is he just going to continue to win? Because we really haven't seen him. I mean, he did. He lost Clay to Murphy got him. But I'm just saying, like, he, he for a second, it kind of felt like he was that guy. He's going to be up against Bryce Hopple again. Uh, Michael Cerrone is going to be in the race. Tony Tio Lopez. So it's a competitive field. So I'm super excited to see what he's going to do. And I say Harris is going to be in it, too. So, that yeah, that will be dope. No, that's going to be a stacked race, the men's 800. But also Tara Davis, bro. Tara Davis debuting with champion her first ever long jump competition she's the new wave she's the new wave and she's a new generation for sure like personified i know we got a new generation folks of cole hawker cooper tier they part of that and isaiah jewett but what tara davis is doing with her just social media side and her first time debuting on that main stage it's all i feel like this is the, the birth of change the immediately that she's going to be premiering as like this champion sponsor athlete she's doing it different she definitely doing it different and we got a different type a race with a different type of field in the men's 60 bro it's a whole different type of this is this is basically u.s championships aaron this is the world championships like i don't know this is gonna be crazy we got trayvon bromel christian coleman marvin bracy ronnie baker noah lyles and omar cloud in this men's 60 trayvon bromel and christian coleman are the last two men's 60s world champ in world, world indoor champions that we've had then also we can't forget christian coleman is the world record holder in the 60 Ron Ronnie Baker is the number three fastest in the 60 as well. And like, are we just not gonna talk about like Christian Coleman? It's gonna be his first time, prime time, like race since that all that stuff with DoorDash and not coming on time and everything. Like, dude, he's back. Christian Coleman's back. We hyped. Who you got winning this 60, bro? Who needs this win the most? And I, I wanna say we can't forget about uh Mr. Black Air Force Energy himself, Marvin Bracy. That's gonna yes, be in this and he had some big time wins last year let's not forget he was someone that you wouldn't leave off the team like he might be on it six four eight pr in the 60 and omer mccloy you know he's angry about how everything panned out for him not being able to race at the olympics in the hurdles so i'm i'm, I'm hungry i want to see what they're going to do as well but if i had to pick who i got in this race bro honestly that's a hard one that's pretty hard bro I feel like Bromel usually comes out pretty good, but low key, I can see Bracey taking this. I can see Bracey taking this because I really don't, Lyles is not a 60 meter guy. It's more of a Bracey, Bromel and Coleman thing. And Baker, uh, Baker too. Honestly, bro, I That's really, my pick. Baker's your pick. I gotta go. 
I'm gonna go with the dark horse pick with Bracy. That's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna go with. I I can see him. I can see him winning this, bro. Cause I feel like he feels disrespected. I I saw something on him track world news how he was talking. So just don't, just wait. Cause everybody talking about you know it's gonna be somebody nobody talking about. That's what I feel like. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be Christian Coleman or Romel. I just feel like it's too early in the season. But I feel like Ronnie Baker and definitely Mar Marvin Bracey, like, they come ready for this. They come ready for this, like, for a 60. And it's going to be exciting. But, like, yeah, it, this is this is definitely going to be a crazy matchup. And it's basically, it's going to be world indoors. This may just, <laughs> if, if all these people do world indoors, this is going to be, like, the final. This is going to be U.S. Championship final. So it's going to be crazy as well. And as we get here for our last thing, Coming in the Milrose, bro, what race are you most intrigued about? Because we just talked about Milrose for a good minute, but we didn't talk about all the events, Aaron. What race are you most intrigued about going on at the Milrose Games January 29th, bro? All right, so there's like really like two races that I'm interested in. And the, the first one is I'm really interested in the women's 60 meter because we have the return of Aaliyah Hobbs. You know, she's been a USA champion before. She's made teams and she false started and wasn't able to make that Olympic team. So I feel like she's gonna come into this indoor season for looking for some payback. And she's up against Gabby Thomas, Brianna Williams, English Gardner, and Sean, Bernard, Bernard Jackson's daughter, Sean T. Jackson, Batman's daughter. She's in the 60s, a, a high schooler, just ran like 33 in the 300, insane. So she, she's another, there's so many young and bright, bright stars so I want to see how she's going to do. And I want to see how Aaliyah Hobbs is going to do. Uh, the other race I'm going to say, I'm going to give you two. The other other race I'm very interested in is the women's want to make your mile. I want to see Jacette Norris. That's why I'm, I'm going to just put it like that. Like, yeah, we got, we got, um, we got uh, Eleanor, it's Eleanor, Pe uh, yeah, Eleanor Pereira, Rebecca, Rebecca Mayer. We got Corey McGee. Right now, you know, since Shelby has left, and I'm not trying to make this all about Shelby, but honestly, though, like, I feel like that 1500 is kind of up for grabs. Heather McLean is in the race as well. I feel like it's kind of up for grabs. Like, for sure, um, Ellie is leading the way, but, like, I feel like Rebecca Mayer can start to stick, stick, uh, sneak her way up into that top four-ish uh, type of place, too. Josette Norris, we seen what she did last year. She was balling. Nikki Hilt, she's always... She's always in it. Jessica Hall is in this race too. Let's not forget Coco is in this race. So we got some Union Athletics people here too. So this is going to be a competitive field. And honestly, I don't know. It could be Coco. It could be Jessica. It could be Jacette. It could be Ellie. It could be Corey. It's really, it's really wide open in this race. So, and bro, remember a couple years ago, like Eleanor Pereira ran like 416 indoors or something. So like, what they're gonna do what they're gonna put on the show i think that's gonna be a very interesting race no yes without a doubt without a doubt the american record is probably definitely on watch there as well but i think most definitely the hottest race for me has to be the men's 800 bro like you were saying earlier like the men's 800 in the u.s is low-key wide open and just the 800 overall it's always an exciting event but the fact that we have donovan brazier there but he's running the 400 he's not running the eight so we get to see everybody else besides donovan brazier who's really eyeing for a spot in this men's hundred with isaiah jewett isaiah harris uh clayton murphy and everybody in between like it's going to be super super interesting and then you have someone like michael cerrone in there as well tonta Nui lopez who's a very great competitor and then charlie hunter and then someone like who's a low-key sleeper in the u.s ranks as well and cameron jones and robert downs so there's so many different people at play here in the men's 800 that's going to make up for a very very interesting race now i'm excited to see and then the men's want to make your mile it's always the highlight of the meet and then you have two really big uh showdowns and storylines going in with Nick Willis trying to get that sub four down for that 20 year streak of breaking sub four and then we have Josh Kerr versus Oliver Hoare I think that's going to be the one-two punch that we're looking to they're both in the Olympic final last year both crazy in the men's 15 so Nick Willis Josh Kerr and Oliver Hoare are the two people three people that I'm really going to be looking out for in the men's Wanamaker but that men's eight bro I think that's maybe the most exciting race of the day how do you feel about isn't Hobbs Kessler in that wanna make or two? How do you feel about that? I think he's Hey, that's that. gonna be his first one ever. You think he's gonna take that? That's what you're saying? No, I'm not saying he's gonna take oh, okay. it. I, was I think that's another debut. That's interesting. We, yeah, that's an interesting. I mean, he did run in a pro kit um for the trials and everything, but this is like his real, like, all right, he 
I'm, you know, starting a pro season from the beginning to the end, kind of. So I'm I'm interested to see like how he fit how he fares in that in that field as well. Cause I feel like people aren't gonna think of him. It's like when Drew Hunter came out of came out of high school, people forgot that like, oh yeah, this guy should be in college right now. But he's just so yeah. beast. Yeah. It's gonna be exciting, man. It's gonna be really, really exciting. But another person that we got on that's beast is the person we got coming up talking to next, bro. Rory Linkletter coming Hi. on the podcast after that Houston half marathon Canadian national record is joining us next on Two Black Runners. Stick around, bro. Hey, Rory Linkletter, what's up? No, but this man that we have on the po on the podcast right now is putting on for Canada, a BYU legend as well. Is training with Ryan Hall right now. Just ran a 101.08 for a Canadian national record in the half marathon. Rory Linkletter joining us on the podcast right now. Rory, how's it going, man? I mean, I'm on cloud nine still, so things are going really well. Just uh, back in Flagstaff, uh, trying to recover from yesterday's big effort and yeah, feeling feeling really, really good and really glad to be here and talk some uh, talk some running with you guys. So you were in Houston um, for that half after what, after doing so well at your race, breaking the Canadian record. What did you go eat? Did you get some good Houston barbecue? What was the what was the after party like? I was on I was on like the first flight out, so I got oh, uh, I and I was you know you you break a record or something like that. You got some crazy like post race energy and like it seems like time just like gets away from you so like by the time i like settled in and it was it was pretty much time to head to the airport i had one of the first flights out so i got a little a little breakfast burrito action quickly and then i grabbed a a little uh mexican food to go um so courtesy of ryan holly bought me some uh, some enchiladas to take on the bus on the way to the airport <laughs> worst bus food ever by the way don't don't eat enchiladas on a bus it's not very nice to anyone around you it's it's a it's a smelly food <laughs> Yeah, but, but that's just that's great to hear. Always a breakfast burrito is a great thing or enchiladas after a race is great is great. But in 2020, you went out there, you ran the second fastest time in Canadian history on the Houston Half Marathon course. So going into 2021, was that in mind breaking that national record? Is that something that you're setting your mind to? Oh, for sure. As soon as I ran my uh, debut half in 2020 in uh, the second fastest time, I like was like I can get that record. That record's mine if if I can if I can get another good day like I had in 2020. Just you know, good weather, good course, good competition. Those are the things you need to set a record. And uh, so 2022, because 2021 they didn't have Houston. I knew 2022 would be a great opportunity. Mm. So even though I ran CIM just last month, I I actually like kind of trained through it and uh, and actually had this circled as my A race uh, coming into the new year. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta be ready for Houston. This is, this is everything. So I, uh, you know, put all my eggs in that basket and, and knew I had to really show up and I had good competition, obviously with Ben Flanagan being there for that same record. He's been on fire yeah. lately. So I knew I'd, I'd not only have to break the record, but I'd have to beat one of the <laughs> hottest guys on the road circuit right now, Ben Flanagan. So I, I had my work cut out for me and I was, I was just really thrilled with the day I had yesterday. That's the, I am bro. Like that's a crazy turnaround to be able to just yeah, see I am Houston exactly. half. Like, what was that just like for that mindset and just recovery and stuff like that to be like, all right, I got to go back on the roads, have this hard, like a real hard effort. Like you said, this is a big deal. Have been flat again, low key, a Canadian national championship meet in a way, you know what I mean? So like, how was that just the, that turnaround and recovery time? Yeah, I mean, it actually went really smooth. Uh, Luckily for me, like the way that I ran CIM and like the, the mentality going in and the way I trained for it, uh, it really set me up really well to balance back quickly because I kind of I kind of was building momentum because I actually ran Boston this fall, too. So after yeah. Boston, I took two weeks down, uh, just kind of like recharging after after a disappointing result. And I kind of built for six weeks towards CIM. And I, I ran a hundred miles the rate, the week of the race, because like, I was still building fitness. Like I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't quite yeah. like in a point where I was like, oh yeah, let's taper, like get sharp for this and all that. So I, I had a different type of approach to that race because I was running with my uh, best friend, former teammate, uh, Nick Hauger. And the goal was to just help this guy run an awesome debut and compete really well and just run the mm -hmm. marathon really well. Uh, so for me, I, I kind of knew stepping that start line, like this was just like a stepping stone race for me. It wasn't like a circle the calendar, like get hyped. It was just, you know, show up, run a good race, uh, you know, cash some checks 
and then move on. So uh, I, uh, I, I took care of business on that day. And, and the next day I was like, it's Houston time. Like I got to do what I got to do to get ready for Houston. And that was all focus, you know, a heavy push towards that. Dude, it's always nice too to just see like your teammate, but like also your real homie do so well in a race. And I'm like thinking now, like you go your first like official race under under Ryan Hall completely and you break the Canadian record. Sarah Hall breaks the American record. How did it feel to just like see all that success as soon as it's like official you're with Ryan? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously uh, it's, it's no secret that like what you do in the past builds towards your future. So like, I got to give credit to Ben Rosario and NAZ elite for like creating like this foundation. Uh, but I also want to give a lot of credit to Ryan. Cause even in such a short amount of time, he's really reframed my mindset on what it, what it means to be fast, what it means to be good. This guy was one of the best to ever do it in, in American distance running history. And his mindset is, you know, it's, it's a baller mindset. Like this guy, this guy lives for success and mm -hmm. breeds positivity and just he really like ignited this uh you know fire under me and confidence in me by like just giving me really hard workouts telling me I could do them me completing them and then him telling me you're ready you you've got this you can do it we're ready for this and you know Sarah's been balling for for a really long time like this was no surprise to see her do that she kind of kept it uh close to the vest and I don't think like people knew she was going for that record but, uh, you know, it's no surprise. Like she's, she's been yeah. on the cusp for quite some time breaking these records. So like, you know, she's, she's the real deal and, and it, it shouldn't surprise anybody to see her do that. Um, I think, uh, you know, people that know me really well and have followed me closely know that I've been capable of, uh, the Canadian record for quite some time too, and just needed a, a good day. And we got one. Is it when you first got out the Flagstaff that you started interacting with Ryan Hall, or has it just been like recently that you start to become more friends with them? When did the relationship kind of like start as just like being friends and then now being a coach? Yeah. So I, I never really spoke with Ryan, uh, prior to starting to work with him, but I knew of Ryan, obviously as any runner would because of his legacy as a, as an athlete. And I just admired everything he stood for. Um, I'm a person of faith. Everyone knows that about him. He's a person of mm -hmm. faith and he, he makes that a big part of his identity and his, like, uh, I guess his energy was just palpable to me. Like I could tell we like kind of viewed the world and the running world in a similar light. And I just knew like, yeah. Hey, I, I really like this guy. I think, I think he would make a lot of sense for me. So when I was looking for a new environment, he was the first person that came to my head and I just shot my shot. I just was like, Hey, do you want to work with me? And he, he was really keen to work with me. And I was really uh, fortunate that he took a chance on me. Cause like, you know, he's, he's a busy guy. He's doing a lot of things with his life. He's got a family. He's coaching Sarah. He's, he's uh, running a business. He's got his online coaching business that he runs and he's just, he's got a lot going on. So he doesn't have to take on a, an athlete like me, but he chose to, and uh, I'm really really grateful that he did. And, uh, so far he's, he's just taught me that like, you got to redefine what fast is like, that's the biggest thing is, uh, I came in thinking I knew like, Oh, that's a good workout. That's a good time in the marathon and the half marathon. Uh, these are, these are fast for a tempo run or for, for these intervals. And mm -hmm. he just said, take down all that, take down everything you think is fast. We're going to redefine fast. We're going to redefine what it means for you. Uh, you know, forget what you used to think were, was a good workout or like a great race. And we're just going to redefine all your normals. And, uh, that was really powerful. Cause I was like, th this is why this guy was so great. He just didn't place any sort of boundaries on what he was capable of. He thinks of things in like a, uh, you know, a dreamer mentality. Like he just thinks like mm -hmm. people are capable of a lot of things. And you hear that, that same energy with like a guy like Ellie Kipchoge, like no human is limited. I feel like without saying that mm -hmm. exactly, that's kind of like Ryan's mentality. He just believes in people and he believes, uh, you got to dream big and, and shoot for the stars and really risk it all. Yeah. Too. And, he, and I, I feel like ha being a person of faith, like goes hand in hand with that mentality and you going to like BYU and now having that connection, uh, training with Ryan, how much did like that connection to faith, um, with Ryan, how, how much do you think that really like kind of helps you um, with the coaching and kind of like believing, believing in his philosophy. 
Yeah. I mean, I think it just draws me to him as a person more than anything, but I also think, uh, you know, if you're, if you are like a, a really strong person of faith, you, you, you know, it takes a large part of your identity and your life and just being able to bring that into training and into running, it, I think is a really powerful tool. Like I can talk to my coach. I can be like, you know, like, uh, we can like, just say like, Hey, praying for you. Like we, we, we can talk mm-hmm. about that language together and it kind of just builds this culture of, uh, knowing that there's like a higher power involved. And I just think that just being able to bring that in to performance just gives you a lot of power to it. Cause there was a lot of uncertainty going into this attempt. Like I had a lot of confidence in my ability, but there's obviously always adversity and, uh, the chance that things don't go your way. And I had some, some hiccups going into the race that kind of sp- you know, created some anxiety and he would really calm my nerves and just told me to be like super grateful and thankful for the opportunity and just focus on that. And I, I did and and it and it worked. And I feel like it's one thing for like you to like try to remind yourself of like what God has made you to be capable for, but then for like your coach or like your teammate to remind you, it's all like, dang, like you I'm also in a good setting. Like I believe in myself, God believes in me. Then all my teammates also on the same thing right now too, like Canadians, they on top. They on top, definitely in the distance running well with like Mo Med, Justin Knight had great track seasons, Gabriel Debu Stafford, Marco Arop in the 800, and then uh, Sacrifian as well. Just how does it feel to be part of this upswing in Canadian distance running where y'all are looking for medals, most definitely? Yeah, I mean, it's it's awesome because you see your fellow countrymen doing it and it just like kind of makes it feel real. Uh, sometimes when we see like a guy like Kachoge, uh, run really well. We, we can't really like, like relate. Cause we just, we don't know what it's like to be like growing up Kenyan, uh, yeah. you know, that level of talent, that level of ability. But like, I grew up, uh, you know, in my running career with like those guys around me and ga- and girls like watching them grow. And like, there was a time when like Justin Knight, like I felt like, Hey, this guy is, he's definitely really talented and really good and world-class, but like there was a time in the NCA where I was like, I'm going to try to beat this guy. Like I, I never did, but, but I was thinking uh-huh. that way. So like when you see him go make a Olympic final and world final and, and run, you know, 1249 or whatever he ran in the 5k this last year, it just, it just makes you start to be like, well, why, why am I limiting myself? If, yeah. if like, that's my uh, countryman and that's someone I, I know, and he's human, he's human, just like us. And uh, if he can run so well, why not me? Why can't I, why can't I do something special? Why can't I make an Olympic team? Why can't I compete at the top at a world marathon major or an Olympic final or something like that? Yeah. It just kind of redefines what, what limits you put on yourself when you see people, you know, and, uh, people that, you know, believe in you, like Justin shot me, a, uh, a message yesterday and was like, congrats on the record. And it's like, I just feel like that, that means a lot to me to hear like someone that, you know, is at the top of our sport, taking the time to like respect something I did, uh, you know, He's a, he's a stud. So like him just taking the time to reach out to me just means a lot to me. Yeah. And, and I'm sure like this level of Canadian distance running right now, they also sprints doing their thing too, but like, it's really like raising it everywhere. Cause I think back to like, when I was younger, Simon Byru, who went to like Wisconsin, I believe he was from Canada as well. And I'm yep. and, like, dang, that catapulted to Mo Ahmed and that catapult to just the night to Rory Linkletter. So like, it's really cool to just see that develop um, over so much time. But another thing I wanted to ask you too was like, why? So after you decided to leave with Nas, you wanted to stay in Flagstaff. I know you have an entire family there. You still have your friends. Like you're saying, Nick Hogger is your best friend. What is it about Flagstaff that's so special to you? I mean, other than it just being the best place to train in the U S with like, as far as like weather training environment, uh, like, I mean, we're at 7,000 feet, but we can drop down in the middle of a snowstorm and run. It's basically sea level in an hour. Uh, you know, it's not quite sea level, but you know what I mean? Like we can get, we can get out of the cold and, uh, run fast and, you know, the train high, uh, train low, live high or whatever, recover high saying like, we can actually practice that perfectly and year round the weather's pretty good like we get hit with snow occasionally but like today like it's sunny it's like above freezing like i ran on a dirt road today in the middle of january Mm -hmm. there's very few altitude places in the country that are like this 
and I just, I've just fallen in love with it as a running town. And I've grown to have a, quite a community here with like fellow runners and, uh, just friends. And I just like it here. And, and my wife likes it here too. And she's not even a runner. Uh, she, uh, has grown in the community. It's a small town. So like, there's, there's just a lot of, of good vibes. I, I kind of like that. And yeah, we bought a house here at the beginning of 2021 and like, we don't want to go anywhere. We we are starting our family here and we just think it's a, it's a good spot. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. That's really just nice to hear, to be honest. And Flagstaff isn't nice. Our brother went to NAU, uh, like back in the day and he ran 800 there. So we've been to Flagstaff a couple of times. It definitely is a nice town. And you're talking about like all the runners there as well. And people saying Oregon, track town, USA, Eugene, but I don't know, bro. Is, 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 is Flagstaff trying to take that away? Like, let's be real here. It's, it's low key. There are a lot of runners there. There are a lot of people. Is that low key track town USA? That's the, is it taking the title? I mean, we don't have to take the title of track town because we don't have like, we're not hosting these world-class events. We'll let Eugene have that. But we, this is the, the running Mecca, I would say. Like, Ooh. like just, it's the Mecca of, of, of running. It's, you know, we got Dark Sky. We got NAZ Elite. We got Sarah Hall. We got uh, just a ton of people coming from out of town to come train here year round. I'll cross the world. You know, the Inga Britson's coming here. I see those guys running around the streets. Like this is, this is the spot. There's a reason why people travel far and wide, you know, internationals and national caliber athletes to train here. It's just because, you know, you can't really beat it. It's 7,000 feet. It's nice weather. And, uh, and there's just a lot of good energy with running, running and runners, you know, it's a community, like people that, you know, I don't even associate with, I don't train with them. I see them around town, but they like wish me well, they they're following me, they're cheering for me. And that just means mm -hmm. a lot. It's kind of like, you know, I, I don't know if you've heard like Flagstaff versus everybody, but you kind of feel that like people really yeah. root for you. If you're, if, if you're a Flagstaff person, um, like Rachel Schneider, uh, for example, like I have no allegiance to her. Uh, you know, she could, she could hate me. I ran for BYU and she's uh, married to Mike Smith. And, and that was my rival back in the day, but you know, she's wishing me well, she's, she's cheering me on when I'm running well and, and we see each other around and we're friendly. And it's just like, there's tons of relationships like that all around town. Even Mike Smith, when he sees me acts like, I'm just like, you know, a member of this community. And, and, and there was a time in, where I'm sure he, uh, him and his team didn't, didn't care for me too much. So it's just, it's just a great community. The Mecca, yeah, that's the Mecca cool. Aaron. Yeah, no, that's super, that's super cool. That, that so many people together, like pushing each other, just wanted to see each other win. And I think, that was one of the biggest things when I think about like Nas Elite was like that family aspect of everyone like being together, being on the team. What were some of like the biggest things you learned from Ben Rosario and that Nas Elite group? I think the biggest thing, and I, I've said this in other places, but it's just like th those people that have been successful there, they're successful because they have absolute faith in what they're doing. Um, Callan Taylor, uh, Alephine, Steph Bruce, uh, Scott Smith, uh, Fable at, with his time with NAZ elite, like those guys just believed in what we were doing as a team and the faith component of your training is so big. You got to believe in what you're doing. So when you step to that line, you just know you're ready. And that is like half the battle is just like stepping to the line and just believing that you're ready to compete. And, uh, they do a great job of that and cultivating that the culture of that team is, is, uh, one of like just absolute faith and, I think Ben Rosario is a true professional. He takes every aspect of the sport seriously. He doesn't cut any corners. He does everything he can to uh, service his athletes and believe in them and, and build them up. And, and it's just paid off to, to creating an, an environment where like, you know, they've had pieces of success that are, that rival any group in the, in the United States. I mean, we, we sent someone to the Olympics in 2021, Alephine Tuliamuk. So, uh, you know, I, I will forever be a huge fan of what NAZ Elite does and those teammates that I was on the team with, like I'll be rooting for them, uh, throughout their whole careers and, and I'll consider them friends. I actually ran with them this morning. They're, they're great people. But now being with Ryan Hall's group, you don't have like a sponsor anymore, but I see the CLA hat on hat, hat on right now Aren't, yep. they're, they're based in toronto is that where uh, montreal they're french oh, canadian montreal. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah 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 but they're canadian yeah. yeah is that what what are you looking for like in your next sponsor coming up or maybe ryan hall gonna get this group coming soon like That's are you we even thinking. thinking about that in this morning right now yeah i mean like i think ryan's very willing to take on athletes uh from talking to him 
I think it's just hard because he has nothing to offer you if other than like his coaching and his belief, like it's, it's hard to really convince like top level athletes to like leave the sponsorship dollars or like, you know, bet on themselves and hope that it works out. Uh, and I think he'd be willing to coach, uh, plenty of other people. I'm not the only person he coached. He also coaches a guy named Caleb Webb that just ran pretty well from big bear. Yeah. Uh, he's training up here with, with me. Um, and he's willing to help anybody. I, 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 I honestly believe that. And it's just a matter of like, look, this is a business as well. And you have to either like, just be super, super good to get a deal outside of a group these days, or just get lucky. And, uh, I'm hoping that, you know, my, my, my record run gives me a chance to pen something here soon. I, I do believe that it put me in a really good position to hopefully sign something over the next month or two, but we'll only, uh, you know, time will tell with that. I don't have anything lined up right now, but Cielli, uh, you know, is backing me financially a, a little bit and they're helping and, you know, they're a small company. So I totally understand that it's, it's different. They can't like, you know, totally like take care of everything. Like, you know, an, uh, yeah a major shoe or apparel company can, but I, I do think, you know, I've got, a, I've got a great agent. I've got a great coach. I've got a great situation. And I think if the right company sees like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty young still, I'm 25 years old. I'm, I feel like I've got a lot of, a lot of time left in this sport. Uh, if someone sees, you know, Sunday's run and, and thinks that I got the potential to be a world-class marathoner, which is what I think is, is the, is the future outlook, uh, then bet on me. I, and I, I'm gonna keep betting on myself until someone else jumps in. Well, I'll say after your Sunday run and and, uh, and that national record, just like my man and Jerry Maguire, show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> hey, show Lori Linkletter the money. Come on, man. Let's get this man a deal. Yeah, I'd love that. <laughs> keep, keep, keep preaching. Hey, I think it's time, Aaron. We need to go to why this man is here. Why, why we brought him onto the podcast. I think it's time. I think it's time because back in... December 21st, 2021, on the Two Black Runners account, we posted this 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 graphic of uh, Newberry Park's all-time team versus the all-time 2010s team. Now there was there's some controversy in the comments. Some people were mad. They were they were disgusted about <laughs> about Yo. this take. And Roy Link later commented, "This is insulting to insinuate the Newberry Park boys could touch these guys. It may be a clean sweep." And then Nico Young responded saying, well, I don't think it's insulting. This is, this is, this is why. And he went back and forth. You can mix it up with these guys, but in a team race, no way. Every guy on that list had national titles. Now, we talked about this, me and Aaron, before on the podcast uh, about these takes. But Aaron, you want to say something before Rory I goes? I have a question. I mean, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. My quick question to you, Joshua, is it insulting to say that it may be a clean sweep by the 2010s teams against Newberry Park. Is that is that insulting to say? That's insulting. That's insulting. Let me go down the That's list. Insulting? We got Nico Young, Colin Salmon, Leo Young, Lex Young, and Aaron Salmon versus Lucas Versbickus, Edward Cheserek, Footsum Zinlasasi, Drew Hunter, and Casey Klinger. That's not in. They are not sweeping this Newberry Park are, team. I'm saying sweeping Rory. as like one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Versus he said clean sweep. He said one, two, three, four, five. Aaron. <laughs> Don't change the subject. He said clean okay, sweep. Okay, 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 okay. Well, let's let Rory speak. Let, let him let him say his piece. Let him say his piece. Explain yourself. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, okay. First of all, knee jerk reaction to the post. I, after further thinking, I do think it would be a good, a decent race, but I still stand by my take that, like, this isn't like coming down to the fifth man. This is like a few of these guys can compete. For sure, for sure. They've they've proven it. They've run fast. They've won, you know, state titles. But like it's really hard to judge this cur like Nico has the chops, like like nationally, right? Nico, yeah. that's why I, t I, I step back and say, wait, okay, Nico could probably run with these guys. But like I was around in high school with when I watched like Cheserick, um, you know, Footsum, Lucas Versbikis, and then Casey Klinger was like a multiple time and uh NXN champ. Like these these guys that that you're that you're mentioning like they were dominant for years in high school not just a season years of dominance and it was over an entire country and i know these guys ran a fast time on a course that doesn't mean anything to me in in cross country it really doesn't like they didn't run a uh, footlocker so to me it, it like 
exactly what, like how can you even stack them up like they won their state meet like who cares like that's state like we need a national level competition i don't care about the times my my whole beef my whole comment is like look cheserk was maybe like one of the rawest best runners we've ever seen come through the high school ranks like there's no way i'm sorry nico was really good and nico i think is like the most accomplished out of these guys of these newberry park guys right. and and you compare him to like what Cheserick was at the time. Like Cheserick didn't crush these track times, but nobody was at this time. Like we're talking cross country here. We're talking foot like throw them on the NXN or the Foot Locker Nationals course, let them duel it out. And I just don't think anyone's touching Cheserick for one. Versbeekus was that dude. That he was that dude. Okay, so two. That's two. I got one two there, and we haven't even touched Footsum, Clinger, and who's the fifth guy? I, I'm just. Is it Grant? Drew Hunter. Put, oh, we Drew, put Hunter, Drew Hunter. If you put Fisher on there, like, come on. Yeah, you could put either of those. Like, Drew Hunter, Grant Fisher, put whoever you want. I could pull more people, too. There's, I just think, like, that decade, we're looking at a blip in in time with the Newberry Park people. Uh, and it was a great season, historic season. Best high school team ever, probably. Um, I just think, like, over the span of a high school career and what we've seen proven by these guys after like dude Cheserick went into the NCAA after his senior year and just dominated the NCAA like Nico couldn't even do that and Nico's the dude like Cheserick went into the NCAA and just said I'm Beat better Lally than Lale. all you guys I'm better than all you guys Beat so Kenny like Kaduka. to me <laughs> it's just like it's not even it's not even the same sport like we're talking generational Drew Hunter took that cheddar. We didn't, couldn't even see what he could have done uh, in the NCAA. And like, that's like the best tr transfer to me is like, how well did you jump to the next level? And like, we, the jury's still out on a lot of these Newberry Park kids. Like I could be eating these words in like two years, right? Like they're young. They could, they could totally level up. But like, though, we know, we know what all these guys were and they were world-class youngsters like these guys were good and they and they've proved it over time like like just extrapolate their career forward like these they were true winners because they've kept doing it on the next level they're all winners okay i understand where you're coming from <laughs> i understand i understand believe me these guys are beasts they're they're killers they are killers but to say that this like it may be it, this could be a blip like next year, Newberry Park could not be what possibly is going to be this year because you got Colin going, but you still got Leo, Lex, and Aaron coming back. They're going to be their senior year. But I just feel like, bro, this is a like we are racing a family against five all time greats. And I think that family racing head to head, like it definitely won't be a clean sweep. Now it's definitely not gonna be one through five. I don't even think it'll be one, two, three. I mean, in the in the highest case, I think if they were to go to head to head and like the 2010s were to get the top two spots, that's gonna be Nico and Colin right after them or something like that. Or it's gonna be battling between Footsum and Colin or Footsum and and Drew Hunter to come in too. And like let's not let's let's, let's put some respect on the Woodward Park course, like for a second. Hermandez Hermander Fernandez is 1423, I believe. No, 1425 at Woodward Park is one of like the most talked about like cross country times, you know, out there. And Wood and Newberry Park was able to run 426, 428, 430, 1446 and Nico Young ran a 1428 there so like those 5k times I do feel like are very similar to uh to Foot Locker but that is the one thing that that's the one thing the error that we can't like really judge because Lucas Ferris Vegas like they ran Lucas Ferris Vegas ran a 1459 Chaz ran a 52 Hunter ran a 55 and uh what's his name uh Foot Simpson ran a 1453 which is crazy, but I do realize too, and this will be my last point, the fact of like, just like the one-off flat course, you know, cross country, 5K, 1403 by Colin Solomon, you know, like that's crazy. But I think what Nico Young has proven, and this is why I feel like it's definitely a valid reason to be there, is that after Nico Young ran that 1339, that three mile at Woodbridge, like he came out and like he, he like proved that he has the goods. So I think it's just the fact of like, after them at running lane, running 1403, 1405 and a 1405, having three people running that fast for a 5K, like they're gonna go crazy this year.
they're gonna go crazy that with sean bronson like something something about running that fast during cross country on those flat courses get those guys running really really fast so I'm, I'm just i'm just glad that you you still ain't saying it's it's not won't be a clean sweep so we cool we cool now rory we could be cool now <laughs> right yeah thing is- i i i'll walk that back I, I i don't think it'd be a clean sweep but i do think uh to put respect on the legends of the 2010s uh it just it it's not a it's not a would this team win it's like wow they could stack up that's that says a lot about them it's it they could stack up but they're i just i still would stand by like it's you you race them 10 out of 10 times 10 out of 10 times the 2010s win that's that's what i would say it could be close a couple times but and uh but I, I think you, you you run this simulation the the 2010s wins every time because there's these are all just all of them individually were so dominant and so unheard of for their times like especially if you just do you just isolate Cheswick and Burzbikis those guys were doing things that nobody like Burzbikis broke four before it was cool and yes. like <laughs> Cheswick Cheswick like that's was nice. just like just destroying everybody nobody could touch him nobody could touch him yeah, and Cesarek won Foot Locker twice. Rosbikis won, uh, won Foot Locker twice. Footsum got second at Foot Locker twice. To, once to Cesarek, once to Lucas. And he got like seventh when he was like a freshman. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm on your side, Rory. But I will say this, like, the thing is, the main reason, well, because the 2010s, they're beast. But it's also like, Nico did his thing, but his brothers and everything, they haven't completed their high school careers yet so yeah maybe next year these guys if but these guys they go ran out the and run times ever though aaron they ran I'm the just fastest saying. times ever i'm just saying they, they, the faster times they gotta ever. do more they gotta That's do crazy. more like if their career was the end today and this we were running the simulation like we're saying i'm still going with the 2010s but let me see let give them give them some time let me see what lex and leo do maybe they're gonna run 828 828 and come if they do something something you know what i mean because it's all it's it's a different era it's a different era too it's really hard like like we're we can't sit here and deny that like spikes and all that stuff aren't helping these times get lowered and also like just historically like people just run faster over time like like using times is just so hard like i want to see like these guys go to an nxn or a footlocker and sweep it like it because like, that's what they would have to do because if you put those five 2010 guys in any national championship there's no way they're not all up there like i would love i wish newberry park could have gone to an nxn a, a stacked nxn and if they swept it then i'd be like okay maybe maybe we can talk now but like if anyone in the in in the country can can split them up they're not as good as these guys were because nobody could beat these guys other than themselves like like the only people person that put, beat Footsum was on this list, right? Like of the 2010s. They went one, two, three, though, Rory. They went one, two, three at running lane. One, two, three. At what? What are you talking about? I don't <laughs> yeah, that's, even know I, what running I, lane if is. If it's not, if it's not <laughs> Foot Locker or NXN, I, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he said, at what? Oh, <laughs> dang. <laughs> Yo. That's true, though. I want to see them run Foot Locker. I feel like they have something against Foot Locker and stuff. I don't know. I think... NXN low key messed things up a little bit, you know. It's or just, different need, these days. It's just different. they need to let they need to let like uh the South uh what's it called not the South the West like be able to do Foot Locker NXN. I feel like that's dumb. Like that, let them let them run both. Like let's get the best competition two weeks in a row. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. But you cannot unwrite like race results. And when people are just winners, they're just winners. And that's what I value about that 2010 team is like I knew those guys like were like fiercest of competitors that's exactly like your boy connor mance right now when his cross country season that man just wins and cross he, he just he's wins. a dog he's a dog yeah. you gotta have you gotta be a dog and he is he is a dog and he will literally die trying to win a race that dude was good in high school too he just had a couple bad breaks his senior year he broke his broke his leg like halfway through the season and uh i think he would have been a footlocker champ that that year had he been healthy so i mean he was a stud. So I, I, I and he's going to be great on the professional ranks. Yeah. I mean, talking about Connor Mance too, like, where do you see, like, see his career going? One thing I've been noticing just like when we look at the women's side in the, in the marathon, I feel like it's getting just younger and younger, like Emily Sisson and Molly Seidel, like all of our top athletes. And then on the men's side, we're starting to get there. We got you, Frank Laura, 
um, Nathan Martin, like younger people out of college being like, I want to attack this marathon. Is that something, you know, Connor, is he, was he someone on the roads or do you think he's more he's of a, a track guy? He's a road guy. He might not okay. give up the track this year, but like we saw what he did in that half champs. That was an awesome run, obviously like to break 61 minutes and to win that race against a pretty good field and like do it the way he did coming off a big cross season to me, like Mance is a marathoner, like because of the way he races and his best events, probably the half right now, like out of all the events, like this guy could probably break 60 on the right day on the right course. Uh, he's just an absolute aerobic monster. And I know he loves the marathon. That dude was going to run the 2020 marathon trials until he got hurt after cr a cross season. Like he was training for the marathon trials in college and he was, wow. and he was dead set. Like I'm going to make this Olympic team. A lot of people don't know that. Like he was, he was lined up like for, to do it. And he, he got his OTQ with a half that he ran or something. And uh, yeah, he was, he was like ready to debut his marathon at the trials with a shot to make the team. There's no way he doesn't run the marathon trials in 2024. And there's no way in my mind he isn't on the team. Like I, I already would pen, pencil him in obviously like barring injury or some sort of setback. He, he could obviously be overtaken, but like he's, he's a, a, a generational type talent. He's going to be a 207 guy, 206 guy, no doubt in the next couple of years in the marathon. Like he's, he's that dude. I love Man, that. I'm hyped. Cause I was just, <laughs> cause we were talking to, I was on Aaron yesterday too. And I think I really do think that we're going to see more younger people running the marathon, even like yourself too, like North America, we, we coming for some people's necks out there, bro. We coming for some people's necks, these younger, younger guys and girls getting yeah. onto the roads eventually. And I think, I think that's the transition we're going to see is just faster times and like more success in the roads and everything over the next like 10 years probably yeah it's, it's a new change it's a new sh and i think aaron made the example too when we we're talking yesterday is that it's the shoes and like being able to like being able just to run that much all the time yeah i i a guy like joe klecker is one that i look at and i'm like dude i can't wait till he runs a marathon like he has he has something in him that would make him a great road racer um i know he's got a lot of talent on the track too but like that's the thing is like that's the problem with U S distance running culture is, is our best runners like to stay on the track as long as they can make teams. Mm -hmm. But if a guy like Klecker or Connor Mance decides to be a marathoner in their mid to late twenties, they're going to light it up. They're going to light it up early. And then, then they have a chance to in their prime actually be world-class and, and, uh, and, and compete for medals at world championships. You look at a guy like Meb Kofleski, like that guy was good on the track. Like he was an American record holder in the 10 K and he gave it up to go to the roads and won a silver medal in 2004. He was still pretty young then. Like you forget this yeah. guy, this guy was on an Olympic team 12 years later. Like he was in his twenties when he won an Olympic medal in the marathon. So that's crazy. There's people that have done it. And I think the path to greatness in the marathon is by wetting your beak early and, uh, and, and just focusing on your best event. If you're a track guy and you're good at the track, you got to ask yourself the honest question. Like, what's my best event though? What's my best event? Like, yeah, I can run a good 10 K and 5 K, but could I run a better marathon? And if your answer is yes, I, I think you, you got to seriously consider moving up when it's appropriate for your, your, your progression as an athlete. Like, are you strong enough? Are you ready? Do you have the, uh, the durability, the aerobic base? And if you can check those boxes, you should do it. Yeah. And I think from a media standpoint, like I, I really want that to happen on the u.s side because we could start building these stars and you're gonna see them grow over all these times of years like especially like for you know the person that just runs marathons for fun and like they'll see like oh like galen rupp is the person that won chicago maybe they know galen rupp but they don't know anyone else because like they just randomly you know stopped running the 10k or whatever they were really big but or they were like decently good and it's like oh they never knew who that was versus someone that was yeah. running marathon since they were like 22 23 and now they're like 28 and they're at the top competing like i feel like that would be so awesome for the sport yep it'll happen somebody will do it and it might be connor mance so uh w once a guy like connor mance does it he sets the the path for like a, the next guy you know like you just gotta you gotta kind of like pave the way and i think he's a guy that could do that yeah, and I may be wrong, but I feel like too, if you definitely like from North America and like you win, you say you win a major marathon or you win worlds or an Olympics in a marathon, like 
you're gonna cash out, bro. Like you're gonna be yeah. big. They're gonna love you. you. They're gonna you don't even have to. So you don't even much. have to win it. You can cash out by just yeah. being being in the, on the podium. I'll tell you what. I don't know the numbers, but I'm guessing Molly Seidel does pretty well. So, uh, my, yeah. and and my guy Mev, he won a couple big races back in his day. That guy made a lot of money in his career. Ryan made a lot of money. Big in his ball career. Lane. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. that's the marathon is is definitely the more lucrative path, and uh, you know that maybe that shouldn't be the reason why you do something, but hey, you're you're a professional, right? Like, where, follow the money. Um, I think if you if you're excited by the marathon, give it a try. Try a half. Tell me what you think. You know what? Like, just just take a step onto the roads and tell me you don't have a hell of a lot of fun. Because to me, that's the thing is like, I just love it. It's so much fun. Road races have so much energy. We close out the podcast. What are some of the major road races that you're looking forward to in 2022? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm I'm gonna keep running some shorter road races this spring. I'm not gonna run a marathon this spring. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep focusing on developing my uh, 10k half marathon road stuff kind of get a little bit more sharp so that next time I run a marathon, you know, going out in like 64 minutes through halfway doesn't seem crazy. That's, that's kind of the goal is like to be able to take a stab at, uh, at the world standard, the Olympic standard, maybe sub 210, sub 209, maybe, I don't know. We'll see what the training leads us to, but, um, you know, uh, for me, that's going to be just winning races, competing well at races, going to more races like Houston, and uh keep keep stacking successful uh road road races and then um in the fall i'm looking to run something fast hopefully something in uh one of the majors flat fast course i don't know i can't i i don't want to play my cards professionally yet but like i've got a flat fast major in the fall circled on my calendar and i want to i want to run fast there so um it's going to be it's going to be a lot of half marathon 10k road race type stuff for me until then I'm going to, I'm going to step on the track again this spring too, just for fun. And just to see if I can lower my PB, maybe get under 28 minutes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to keep training that because you can't get too far away from that speed. If you want to be a great marathoner. Most definitely. We are definitely tell you always got to have some speed, you know, and always, comes yes, down sir. To, always comes down to it. It's a foot race at the end of the day. Also, do you have any updates? We know you got your own podcast with the running rivals as well anything you and nick have to put out uh pretty soon or what's what's going on there yeah we're gonna we're gonna keep pressing it out we're at, we were actually talking yesterday probably do an episode this week talking about you know houston or or like just some of the stuff that's happening in the running world right now kind of update our listeners on what's going on and then we're trying to line up some good guests we got some uh hopefully some top women in the u.s uh distance running scene that we can bring on mm -hmm. uh we'll see who that is uh i'm, I'm shooting my shot and, and seeing who 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 will grab on and say yes you never know but uh yeah we're gonna keep doing it we we're we're loving it we just do it for fun i like talking i like talking running you know we're we're yeah. just all running nerds track nerds whatever you want to call it and we just love ch chatting this up so really appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to to do that with you guys here no, yeah, it's always fun, bro. I'm excited for to do it in the future, to be honest. But we appreciate you, Rory, coming on, man. Really fun time talking to you. Definitely, we got set, we settled this beef on this high school cross country too. Got to talk a little bit about the future of the marathon. Really excited to what you're gonna do next, bro. Aaron, you got anything else to say before we get out of here? No, I appreciate you coming on. Everybody, uh, tapping in. Make sure you go check out the Running Rivals podcast as well. Uh, they're gonna have some pretty big guests, I'm sure especially from the roadside so you don't want to miss out on that i mean they're in the mecca of flagstaff so like yeah mecca. They're, they're gonna get a bunch of a bunch of amazing guests so make sure y'all check out the running rivals podcast too thanks yeah, guys I really you, yeah i appreciate the shout out appreciate the time and wishing you guys the best hopefully you guys keep crushing this year and uh, do your thing yeah.